they're not fit for human consumption. I wanted to do this video a long time, but I didn't do it under my other channel, Glendon007. That's mostly for the storage auction stuff. But the title of this segment, The Degree Myth. This is something that is being rammed down the throat of any intelligent person in the United States of America. You need a degree to be successful in life. Which is essentially a bunch of bullshit because the scores of people who are making above average income, and average income is 46 grand a year. What that means is 50% of the people in this country make less than $46,000 a year. When you crank it up to 65,000, 75% of the people make less than that number. And when you get up to 100 grand, it's like 20% of the country makes more than that. Yet, roughly 35% of the people in this country hold a degree. This number is not adding up. And actually, actually, I'm going to even break it down further. One of the things that you really need to understand, there is, for most degrees, no direct correlation between having a degree and income. Let me say that again, because people are going to like, that's not true. I've heard it. Even the president said it. You need a degree. Higher education. It's just on and on and on. What you need are specific and marketable skill sets, which can be gained through earning a degree, or you can learn on your own through experience, apprenticeship, internship. Give you, an give you a great example. Take Silicon Valley, which has an average income of 75000 a year, yet only 15% of the people in that area have a degree. Why is that? Well, why is that? Because there's a tech area. Tech does not care if you have a degree or not. Tech cares if you can get the job done and solve problems. If you are some little grungy little kid in your basement that comes up with a new app, guess what? You could be making six to seven figures a year because you've solved a problem. You've created something better that makes people's lives better, easier, more fun, whatever. That's how you make money. Let's go back down to the degree myth. First of all, there's a few degrees that you have to have to do the job, such as being an attorney, a doctor, an engineer. There's certain training that you have to have for those fields. But how many fields are there like that? Seriously, when you just go through the catalog of college degrees, there's probably 50, maybe 60 fields where you absolutely have to have a degree. Like I said, you know, uh, nursing, say, uh, chemistry. And what's really funny about that is if you're like Dean Carmen, you've heard of the guy. Oh, you yeah, know his name? He's the guy that invented the Segway. He did not finish school. He went in, got what he needed, and got out of school, excuse me, withdrew himself out of school, and started inventing shit and became a multimillionaire. And, you know, understand, this video is not saying that education is not valuable. Information is the most valuable commodity in the world. That There's no disagreement with that. My disagreement is the degree thing. It's leading a lot of people to pile on tons of unnecessary debt. If you're getting a degree in history, English, philosophy, and you're not going to law school, you could be in trouble. Once again, those type of degrees, and you're not going to be a teacher. Once again, you're in trouble because a lot of people don't understand. This is how you're paid. It's not how cute you are. It's not how great you are. Your pay is determined by how easy it is to replace you. Therefore, if you're easy to replace, your payment, your pay will be lower. If you're easy to replace, your pay will be significantly lower than if you are super rare. Case in point. General labor, someone who's picking up trash. Anyone can do that. You're going to make eight, ten bucks an hour. Say you're an orthopedic surgeon, um, like a guy I know, Dr. Bush, 700,000 to a million or more. Why? Tons of training, tons of expertise, and it takes a very long time to become an orthopedic surgeon. Undergrad, medical school, four to five year residency, a fellowship. That's a huge chunk of your life. And if you're good, the sky's the limit. But once again, I know people who, you know, this is one of the things I learned about, love, love about business. 
if you have a good business idea and you have the tenacity, the drive, and the intellect to make it work, you could be making a high you know, five-figure salary to low six-figure salary within two to four years, which is the same amount of time it takes to get a degree. Also, just like a degree is not a sure path, having your own business is not a sure path. But in life, we take risk. But the big deal is do not allow that to seize your mind to the point that I must get a degree, I must get a degree. Ask yourself this. If you're going to school, why am I going to school? And once I earn this degree, what's going to be the outcome? If you're like, I'm earning history and it's going to be real difficult for me to find a job. I mean, don't believe me. Check out the blogs of people who have 3.5s, 3.4s, serious GPAs, can't find a job because a GPA will not find you a job. That means that the curriculum that they gave you, you did well. Big whoop. I'm serious. There's a guy in India right now who's coming up with an email app. I'm sorry. He's coming up with a, a mobile phone app. And he's going to make more money in two years than you will in your whole freaking life. And he's in a village with a bull outside. This is the world. You've got to you've got to solve problems. Or you have to invent something. Or you have to build something. <laughs> this is a knowledge-based economy. That doesn't mean you have to have a degree. If there's certain things, you know, if you want to get one, go ahead. But go to community college. Pay cash as you go. And don't get in six-figure debt for a job, for a degree, that's only going to get you a five-figure job. It doesn't make sense. It just doesn't when there's other avenues. There's uh, other ways, like myself. Uh, the job I did when I got out of the military, I spent six months in a military MOS, and it got me a job just like that in a recession. I had the skills, I had the credentials, and I moved right on into the job. Whereas I had friends who had less stellar MOSs and they struggled to find a job. The guys that were in Intel, crypto, medical MOSs, no problem. What is it? It's skill set, it's skill sets and experience. But I want you to do the research because many colleges know, you know, the so called degree premium, it's a sleight of hand with data. Because if you pull, the doctors out and the engineers and all of these high income degree professions and you just put in degree people with regular run of the mill jobs with high school grads with regular run of the mill jobs there's not that much difference except the high school grad doesn't have the student loan debt load that the degree person does understand you know education is critical you have to be able to learn new skills, new things going forward. That's just the way the world's going to be. But do not get caught up in the degree myth because there's so much documentation that it's not necessary to have a degree to make a lot of money. If that's your goal in life, if your goal in life is to be a studier of flowers and you want to be the best horticulturist in the world, and you go to school and you get a master's and that's your goal, you're a success. But if your job, if your goal is, now, if your goal is to go to college and make a million dollars a year, unless you choose the right degree, which is usually going to be a management consulting and you're going to have to go to B school and it's going to be Wall Street or somewhere like that. And only the cream of the crop is going to get those jobs. So if you're in a class of 150 and only the top 3%, that's 15 folks that are getting those jobs. So the other 135 are, guess what? You're back to the regular shit like everyone else. Yet you just spent $150,000 for your master's degree. I'm telling you, it, it is sad, it is tragic, and it's leading our kids to do crazy stuff because I hear it. I need to get a degree. I need to get an education. I need to get an education. But what's missing is the specifics. You need a specific education to do a specific thing. Understand, there's a huge difference between making money and being a well-educated, very interesting, 
very well-read person. I know many people that fit that program, and they're all broke. I'm a, I'm a regular guy. But the thing is, I learned how the game is played. You know, you make money by serving people, not being by, served by people and saying how great you are. Doesn't cut it. All right, this is Glendon. Hey, it's Glendon, and I'm having a great day today. Hopefully you are too, because YouTube is so much fun. But I'm not going to jump into that. I'm going to jump into this. Life is changing. I did a video titled The Degree Myth in 2011. Much to the derision of my friends, irritation of my friends, not some with one, two, three, four. One even has like seven degrees. And broke as a church mouse in the hood. But we won't go there. And people, you know, now I had the audacity to put that video on my Facebook page. And every time I put it up or I comment on it and that it goes across, someone just has steam coming out of their ears. They're just pissed off. As I said, I made that video in 2011. A lot of things have jumped off since then. Legitimate news sources. Newsweek. Time. The Wall Street Journal. Fortune. You name it, they've talked about it. Many, many people are questioning the legitimacy of a degree. I was watching my boy. If you like to be up on top of investing in gold and silver, check out Street Money 21. Funny dude. And I was watching this video late last night. And he was like talking about degrees. And at that point, I was like, whoa, this is this is real because it's, it's everywhere. See, this is not just me saying this. This is not just me. There is empirical evidence that's saying a 40-year degree may not be the way to go. You couldn't say that 10 years ago without someone just slapping you and saying something wrong with you. You're stupid. You're ignorant. I got that in 2011. But let's really take things that we know. The most important thing is to capture knowledge. Second most important thing is to take that knowledge and use it to enrich your life. We agree on that, right? But for some reason... People have become seduced, bamboozled, hoodwinked that they need to go to someone's university to be validated. And it's the new slavery. It's government suing, pe suing people over student loans left and right right now. You cannot escape a student loan. Can't do it. It will hunt you to your grave. It'll even hunt your parents if they co-signed for it. Let's talk about that. Let's really, you know, just get broad with it. Number one, our educational system is not as good as the one that I went through in the 70s and 80s. It's not. It's just not. And it was better in the 60s because they focused on two things, reading and writing, which are the benchmarks of all learning. Crazy stuff has gone on since then gotten away from it, totally gotten away from it. So now you have a huge population that is educated but lacks critical thinking skills. Now, how important is that? I'll break it down for you. Back when I was a scrub, I was a loser. Yes, I was. As I was trying to put my life together, I sat down in my room, in the hood, and I pulled out sheets of paper, and I started writing up diagrams for my future. I actually weighed the cost, the opportunity cost, of getting a degree versus starting a business. Now, this process went on, but it was pretty much a wrap in one, one night. But I went out for a week, and I just went back and checked my numbers, because, and this is when things were better, understand? But I looked at the effective value of that degree versus the jobs I can get. Now, this is what's really crazy about this exercise. A lot of the stuff that I wanted to get into 
doesn't exist anymore. It's been taken over by automation. I want you to think about that. Because I was going to get into statistics. And I think if, you know, I was actually, the dream was when I was a kid, go to Boston College and come out and work into one of those fine brokerage firms on Wall Street. But I actually changed my mind about that. And I looked, I really looked at that stuff. And I was like, if I had, you know, right was the business and left was school. If I had turned left, you wouldn't know me on YouTube. I wouldn't be here. I would be working two to three or four jobs to replace that one I lost. I wouldn't be here. I would be one of those people that was out there protesting on Wall Street. I would have been one of those people. I would have been that guy that's getting ready to go home and get the gun and come back and shoot up everyone in the place because I worked there 20 years. I gave them my blood, my sweat, my tears. And you're going to tell me you're going to fire me? I would have been that dude. So... Thank God I had critical thinking skills because I was able to plot out with a great degree of accuracy the right choice for me. Now, what was right for me that may not be right for you, but thank God I learned how to run a business, to start a business, to source a business, to vet out business ideals because that education right now is freaking priceless because... I don't care what's going on. I'm going to be okay because I know how to produce stuff. Did a video. Producer, consumer. In that video, I had a challenge because most people are addicted to spending money and don't even know it. See if you can go a week without spending money. And it's going to be hard because you're conditioned to spend money. And just like you're conditioned that even with all of this evidence... Going to school and getting any old degree is not the way to go. There are people lined up to go to school. Their friends can't find jobs. Their parents. Now let's talk about this because once again, critical thinking. Hey, Glendon. Well, the thing is that the unemployment rate is lower for those who have a degree. And I would say, you are absolutely right. Because I was an employer. And if I can get a college-educated person for the same money I would pay a high school graduate, that's what I'm going to do! <laughs> that's not a benefit. That's not a benefit. When you really parse the numbers, they're not all lovely. There was a study. I couldn't find it. And that's something else. When you're really looking for hardcore information, a lot of times you cannot find it online. You really have to search and you have to go through pages and the page 20. It's amazing what gets buried online, yet the world is wide open, right? No, it's not. Because there was a survey. I can't remember, and that's one of the reasons I'm having a time, hard time finding it. But they came out and said those numbers about what a degreed person makes and what a high school, they weren't exactly accurate. And based on what I know, how many people I know with degrees who are not making a lot of money? They made money here, there, there. And the thing is, with a business owner, your shit can go bust and you can be broke too. So I'm not going to throw stones. But the thing is, if you know how to start one business, you know how to start another one. And after a while, you get really good. You can just walk into someone's business and go, hmm, this is going really well or this is about to be closed in a minute. Because you develop those skills. So... Essentially, what's going on right now is a huge, huge shift. Understand, it has not, it's not a matter of it starting. It started. We're already going through it because right now people are like, man, it's bad. And you ain't seen nothing yet because this is something that's funny with the investment markets. There's a lot of market suppression. There's a lot of games. There's a lot of shenanigans. But there's a certain class of people that it's not really messing with. Creative class, 
and the entrepreneur class that knows how to manage money. There's an entrepreneur class that doesn't know how to manage money. They're going to be screwed just like everyone else unless they just get a good lick. But I know people that this the recession didn't check. They actually bought more stuff because they were financially positioned and they had a financial education. I'm trying to tell you something. I, you know, was talking to some people and I was like, what's the difference between a Roth RA and a traditional RA? And they didn't know. And these are educated people. They have degrees. And it's like, no one could tell me. And that was 10 people at the situation. No one can tell me. And I was like, well, you know, with a Roth, you, you, you pay taxes now. And all that money and the earnings, if, you know, you're the certain age and you've had the money in there a certain time, you don't have to pay any taxes on it again. So, because this is me. This is me. This is based, you know, Connecting the dots. What do we have? We have a huge financial problem with our economy and our government right now. Big, big debt, right? Let's circle the globe. Name one country that doesn't have a similar problem. There are a few. There are a few. One of them, if Hitler knew what, if he wanted to enslave the world, he just had to lend the money, he'd be like, Phew. Germany only has 82 million dollars. I mean, 82 million, a population of 82 million. But they, what does Germany do? They build shit. Robots, cars, space, they build shit. We, we, owe, we got some of Germany's gold and we can't give it all back to them. They're like, you know, it's like, yeah, you'll get it in a few, you know, in the next decade. And you, you can't, you can't even get it all up. So essentially, there are not many places that are financially sovereign, just to break it down to the nuts. There's not too many places on the planet that are financially sovereign. War, there's war in a lot of places. Bad economies, right? Because people talk about, you know, I'm leaving the United States. Where the fuck are you going? There's a few places, but understand, go back and study history. Just because they're safe right now, doesn't mean they're going to be safe in five years. So what are you going to do? You just go, you know, jump around the globe. What are you going to do? Because the thing is, I don't care how much money you have. Going back to history, World War II, there were a bunch of really rich Jewish people that had their shit snatched, and they were put in concentration camps. So don't think that just because you have money, you're going to be safe. Because if you go to the wrong country, they will seize your shit and throw your ass in prison. Because this is the thing. This is not the national. This is not the well. The other country is beautiful. I was in the military. I got to go to countries and live in the ville. Well, how the natural, the ladies live, and I saw stuff. So you know, all you people talking about, I'm getting the hell out of America. Good luck. But with that, back to connecting the dots. The world right now has financial turmoil. I think we can all agree about that, right? Shake your head, nod. Nah, yeah, yeah, it's true. So. What does this mean? At some point, taxes are going up. Everywhere. Virtually everywhere. They're going up. So, for your financial, you know, educational and financial, you need to, number one, manage your money as well as you can right now. Two, save money. Three, make more money. It's not an either or. You got to do both. You got to manage what you have, save, and crank it up. Make as much money as you can while you're managing your money properly. Because you're going to have to have it. I have a Roth. Now, the thing is, my situation is a little different because I am uh, special. But I'm not going to give tax advice or investment advice on YouTube because everyone's situation is different. But I will give you some general guidelines. I'm going to say this. If you have a job and you have a business, there's a wonderful, there's a ton of beautiful stuff that's open for you in terms of saving money on taxes and investments. It's crazy. I mean, up to, I think, an income of half a million bucks or even greater than that. I haven't looked into the limits. But just, just say this. You need to start a business and you work hard to make a profit even if you have a job, you need to do it. 
You also need to learn the difference between a regular RA and a Roth RA. And you need to know what the difference between a call. You need to know how to put in stop losses. You need to know this stuff. Because understand, our current tax system was designed for institutions, businesses, and entrepreneurs. Know this regular folks was nowhere up in the mix? Wasn't made for you. Was not made for you. And it's never going to be made for you. So keep on thinking that somehow things are going to become ooh, fair. They're not. They're not going to become fair. They're not even going to become close to fair. Get yourself a financial education. 30 minutes a week for the next six months will do wonders for you. Because it'll change how you think. You'll start looking at things differently. Because I looked at going back to school and I'm a college dropout. I just said, I am currently in the free fall because I'm dropping out of this bitch. And that was my story. It may not be for everyone. And one of the better decisions that I made. But with education, I looked at it as an investment that just crunching the numbers. And understand, I didn't even do this calculating. I did all this with longhand. I just wrote out. And this is part of the exercise. If I made X amount of dollars, knowing what I knew about raises, because you were only getting 2 to 3%. If you wanted to get a significant raise, a lot of times you had to change positions or get another job completely. So I just went ahead and added those 3%. And then I factored in inflation, and you get a 3% raise, but inflation's 2.2%. You ain't making no headway, player. None. Actually, you're going behind the eight ball because you're blowing money fast. You're already living at a level that's higher than what you make, and you're losing ground. And before you know it, it's because you're underwater. This is why you got to learn. Because in the hustle mindset, I put in there one of the first tenets is you got to manage your money. You have to do it. You have to do it. There's no longer optional because understand, a lot of these social programs are in place right now. A lot of them are not going to exist when you're old, man. They're not. If they exist, they're going to be toothless. They won't have any, any, won't even be able to punch. They will have a paper bag. You are going to have to take care of yourself and your family because it's going to be a cold, cold, cruel world. Because this is the thing. Like, I don't own any assault weapons, but this is how I look at it. If you are a smart squirrel and you are putting those nuts up in the tree and then shit jumps off, guess what? The not-so-smart squirrels are going to be smart enough to rob your shit. So if you got the, they will think about it. This, you know, that's just me. That's just me. I don't think that we are there yet, but in the next two decades, we will be. That's my opinion. Because people talk about, you know, we're gonna have this underclass, right? We're gonna, we, we already have an underclass. It's just they have cable and PlayStation. Understand the new. Poor today is not poor during the 1920s. In the 1920s, you were we we lived in a t house with a tin roof that was a dirt road up to the door, and when our shoes wore out, we put cardboard in them because we couldn't get any more. There was no Payless, there was no Walmart. It's either you had or you didn't have. Now, I level the poor has a certain, you know, they have luxuries. I poor people have luxuries. I've been to other people's countries. That's the reason Mexicans are like, I'm going through the fence, homie. Homes, I'm coming, homes. Because there's some abject poverty there. Not to mention your ass can get kidnapped. But understand, what we are going through leaves you very few choices. Very few choices. Because... It's, it's like so many bad things have happened that there is no turning back because at some point when we get the right leadership, 
these two things are going to happen. Taxes are going up, and kahunka, shit's going to get cut. Going to have to do both, because the problem is so large. It's like, hey, you know, we're going to start cutting here, we're going to do... And also, if we could keep our ass out of a war, because the thing is, people are like, yeah, you know, we need to get rid of those social programs. War is one of the biggest social programs on the planet for only a handful of people. Because understand, these last, this decade, over a decade of war has made a group of people amazingly rich. Understand. It's a social welfare system like you ain't never heard before. Because this guy comes in year one. He's an account exec. He cashes out with $10 million in a, you know, and he's, he's living in, in Florida. And he's 36 because he's done. He's made his money. A lot of people got rich off of this war. A lot of people. But people are like, I'm waving my flag. Understand, at some point, it had to be over with. But, you know, that's a whole nother thing. But essentially, let's just really, really talk about it. Because the thing is, it all, to me, it all makes, it all connects together. Because why do you go to school? You go to school to gain education and knowledge so you can take care of yourself and your family. That's what it boils down to. There's a lucky few who go to school just to learn some new shit because that turns them on. That's not everybody. Everyone is not in that position. Because... If you're not making any money in the United States of America, you have a lot of problems. Money may not buy happiness, but it solves a lot of problems. So, you got this stuff going on. And I'm, I'm really trying to be real here because there's a lot of people who are going to be really, really hurt with this I must go to school thing. I put up recently about a nurse in California who couldn't find a job. And people are like, well, you know, she's not wrong. I'm like, hello? It was, if you were a nurse, it didn't matter where you were. You should be able to get a job. The fact that there's a problem there is just a symptom of a larger problem. Understand, a lot of stuff's going to change. And I want you to think about something. If you're in your late 30s, early 40s, there's some things that you have witnessed that you were told you would not witness. Teaching was supposed to be recession-proof. Nursing, healthcare was supposed to be recession-proof. Firemen, police officers were supposed to be recession proof, right? Every last one of those professions have experienced massive layoffs in these last seven years. Every last one of them. Some cities have shut down their fire departments or their police departments and they banded up with a larger force because they didn't have the money. These so called re recession proof jobs. Now I want you to think about something. If a fireman, a nurse, a teacher, can get laid off, what's going to happen to you? Think about that. There is no such thing as a recession-proof job. None. Because technology is moving, and it's moving faster than people anticipated, and people are being not replaced, but displaced. See, replacement is they're getting another human. No, you're being displaced. They're not bringing any more humans. It's computers, technology. This is what's happening. So if you want to go ahead and dispute me and say that, you know, I'm wrong about getting a degree, I will beg you to put in what is the value of a college degree in Google and watch the results that pop up saying it ain't worth shit. I feel cheated. I feel bamboozled. I felt led astray. I have got $60,000 of student loan debt and I can't find a fucking job. So, go ahead and debate all those people who are feeling that pain. Because, see, I'm not that person. I don't have any student loan debt. I don't really have any debt. <laughs> Sorry. You know, and I don't mean, you know, I'm not laughing at anyone who actually is going through some pain because they were lied to. But the reality is, at some point, you got to stop fucking up and fly right and go straight. At some point, you got to go, you know, this ain't working. It's not working. And if you're already on that path and you're in there, you know, I, I, hey, I feel for you. Because you're going to have to work it out any way you can. But understand, this time, when I say the degree myth, let me just flip it. The degree fact. 
Because if you don't get the right degree from the right school, in the right curriculum, in the right field, you are going to have some problems. Debate me on that shit if you want to. It used to be you can go to school and get a degree and picking band-aids off of pandas and your ass got a job. Mm -mm. There was another shift because, you know, law school is the de facto. I don't know what the fuck I want to do with my life, so I'm going to go to law school because it sounds good because I really don't know what I want to do. Glut of lawyers. A few years ago, I read the article, the lowest level of lawyers being hired ever. Go Google it. Don't believe me. Google what's going on in the law profession. Hard as hell to get jobs. Hard as hell. Or if you get a job, it may not be as high paying as you think it may be. So, what's the answer? You. You need to figure out what you want to do with yourself. Stop believing in the narratives. Stop thinking someone's going to save your ass. Superman is not fucking coming. You are going to have to go in that spare room, pull out your grandma's sewing machine, and sew your own fucking ass on your chest. Because that's what it's going to take. Because what we're about to return to is something that has not happened since those pilgrims came and pimped the hell out the Indians. Hate me if you want to. That's what happened. Indians were just chilling. You know, hey, you know, I'm doing me. You do. Oh, look, there's some pilgrims. That shit was over. But when those pilgrims came here and they worked the land, everybody was self-employed or an indentured servant to some rich person. You see any difference? That's where we're going. Because this new economy, those low-level jobs that really just, you know, grunt jobs, you know, that's going to be the reality. So you got two choices. Work really hard on educating yourself and put the damn video games down. Stop watching so much television. Actually pick up books, real books, you know, more than 200 pages. No, I'm sorry. A 100-page book is a book. But what I'm saying is get put, start cramming some substance into your noggin. Start researching things. Start trending stuff. Create a goal that you are going to know what just at the minimum what financial terms are. You need to learn how to speak the language of money. You need to. Speaking the language of money is going to make you more money than getting a master's degree or PhD. Sorry, it will. Because we have billionaires with no degrees to attest to that fact. Not one, not two, not three, not four, several dropped out of school and became fantastically rich. Which should tell you, you don't have to go to school to have a successful business. But you do need knowledge. You do need knowledge. Let's not get it twisted. You have to have knowledge. You, you have to educate yourself. You really, really have to put some information into your system. You have to. It's not about like don't go to school and sit around and smoke gondola all day. No. You know, if you're going to be the weed man, and seriously, oh, speaking of that, we have two states, I think, could be more, that have legalized weed. But it's still against federal law. And the federal law said, you know what? We're not going to prosecute people in these states because the states said they want it. Guess what? Weed is 20 years, 25 or more states. I'm going to say I'm gonna say 30 states are going to legalize weed. Probably 30 or more. Why? Because they need the money. <laughs> Your grandma going to be like, yeah, baby, I got to go drop these dime bags off <laughs> to Mrs. Jones. <laughs> Your grandma going to be slinging reefer, man, <laughs> to subsidize her social security. I am not kidding you. <laughs> Your grandma going to be a runner, man. <laughs> I'm laughing, but it's going to happen. Because old people like to hustle. They like a little extra cheese on that check. So <laughs> you're going to see some mad stuff. So my question to you, what are you going to do about it? I mean, seriously, you know, I'm just a dude on YouTube. You know, whatever happens in your life is what happens in your life. But what are you going to do with it? Because it's going to impact you more than it's going to impact me. What are you going to do? I mean, seriously, what are you going to do? Because, you know, I, I get emails and like, you know, I don't want to work that hard. Uh, I want to get this done in six months. Those are fucking pipe dreams. It took me one, 
two, three, four business failures for my mind started to really grasp the concepts of business. I'm a slow learner, sorry. It happened over years. You got the internet. You can go out and find a new business model, start studying, and get that puppy running within six months and start throwing out some serious cash within six months to a year. You can do it. It's out there. But it's not going to come to you and, I am opportunity. Open up your pocket. I'm going to jump in. It's not happening. Unless you're blonde with big boobs. It happens a lot then. But seriously, is that, I mean, you really, really, because I'm making this video because I get this these emails. It's like, hey, I'm going to school. I'm 21. I didn't feel comfortable saying this the first time I did the video, the degree myth. But I'm going to say it. Don't go to school. Don't. If that school cannot guarantee you a job, like some trade schools actually can guarantee you a job. It's like you go, you pass, they'll get you a job. If it's something like that, that makes sense. But if you cannot know without a shadow of a doubt, because understand, once you sign those papers, see, as that ink goes through that paper, some metal comes out and it turns into handcuffs and then, chink, you're locked down. Whether you finish the program or not, you still have to pay that money. Think about that. How many people have paid tens of thousands of dollars to a college, dropped out, and still had to pay for the loan? They had to pay for failure. If schools operated on this principle that you must become educated and become a valuable member of society, they would be smaller. <laughs> Seriously, they would be smaller. That's just reality. Because a school is the only thing that I know of that can fail massively and still make thousands of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars while failing massively. No other business in America that I know can pull that shit unless, you know, they're paying some politicians off. But that's, that's the deal. Don't go to school. Start doing something. Get the book, The $100 Startup. Read up business books. Learn about money, read stock books, read about art. Fill your head with information that will lead to sense and sense that will make dollars. Because, you know, I, I will say it with a hundred degree earnest, you know, being earnest, uh, don't go to school. Seriously, don't do it. Unless you know without a shadow of a doubt that you're going to make some money. Because the consequences are too dire if you slip. Right now, you've got kids, 60, 70, 80, $100,000 in debt. And that debt is going to cripple and hamper them for the rest of their life. And that's a long time, man. That's a long time. It's going to mess up the ratios when they go for that house. It's going to impact every financial decision they make moving forward. Every last one. Now, if that's not slavery, I don't know what is. Just something for you to chew on. So go ahead, leave your comments. Tell me how I'm wrong about the degree thing. Go ahead and say how your life's wonderful and how it's go Go right ahead. But while you're doing that, I want you to open your eyes and come out of your myopic state and look at what's happening with the rest of the world. Weigh in that information before you give me your, well, this is my life and this is all I know, response. Because if you do their information, there's no way that you're going to come in here and go, oh, Glendon, you're wrong. If you do their information, you know, you do the research and you really get out there and start digging. And, you know, one of my friends was cracking on me because I ride the bus to remind myself how fucking fortunate I am. Because, see, there are people out there. They're taking two and three buses to go to their job, and they're spending anywhere from three to four hours one-way travel time to go to a low-wage job. I was that person once in my life. That shit sucks. It sucks hairy fucking monkey balls. It sucks so bad. So when I'm on that bus and I'm looking at these people and I'm looking at these families transporting and moving themselves, I, my heart fills with fortune and gratitude. Because I could be that person. I go out and look at what's going on in the world. I don't sit up in my house going, you know, hey, you know, I got it good. So everyone else should get Or they didn't work harder. No, 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 no. A lot of people were lied to. 
they were totally, totally fucking lied to. I was one of those people, and one day I started climbing out the matrix and the tubes started popping off. And the truth hurts at first because you're used to tasting lies. It hurts. It hurts a lot. But then you get used to it and you expect it. So, really, just go out there. And, you know, before you respond, go to a homeless shelter. Go to the part of town where there are homeless people. And look them in the eye. I've actually talked to homeless people because I've talked to some really smart ones. And they were just like me at one point, And something went very wrong. And I am trying to prevent that shit from happening in my life. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not gonna say I'm too young. I'm not too proud to beg. I'm not. Hey, it could happen. One little mental illness, break up with the family, starts, you know, taking or smoking. It so little things can loom large. So I'll talk to these people and it keeps me grounded because I'm telling you, here's a little kid from Alabama with a speech impediment. Special ed kid who saw some shit that PhDs fucking missed. What does that tell you? Oh, they're smart. Don't say they're not smart. They're smart. Is that we adopt narratives and we go forward with those narratives even if they're detrimental to our mental state physical state and financial state because i got some more stories that i am going to tell you about the storage auction business about people because see people used to come to me and try to sell me stuff all the time i haven't even begun to scratch the story the surface with those stories so i'll leave you with that chop it up Chew it up. I am looking forward to your responses because it's 2013 and it's not just me saying it. There's a lot of people saying it. Seriously, a lot.